Hello world, and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at availability zones on Microsoft Azure and how you can use these to create highly available applications spread across an Azure region. Today we're going to look at availability zones on Microsoft Azure. Now last time we looked at availability sets on Azure, and this is not to be confused with availability zones. An availability set was a, an application that was deployed across what we call fault domains, and a fault domain is essentially an isolated rack that has its own power and its own networking, so it decreases the probability that any one virtual machine in an availability set will be uh, go down in the event that that rack fails. Now, this doesn't cover the event where an entire data center can go down on Microsoft Azure. In that case, Microsoft uh, provides a highly available option for applications called availability zones. A Microsoft region is essentially composed of not just one data center, rather it's multiple data centers. And these data centers are located geographically close to one another. So if I was working in the East US region, all of the data centers that compose that region would be located within a few miles of one another so that you have a decent latency between those various data centers. And what you end up with the, with these multiple data centers is each data center having its own cooling, its own power, and its own networking. And they have high-speed connections between all the data centers that compose that region. So then what you can do with these data centers within a given Azure region is deploy your app to an availability zone and their app will then be uh, spread across that given region across the data centers that compose that region. So that's essentially what an availability zone is. It just takes that idea of high availability and brings it up a level to the region level so that you have highly available applications spread across an entire region so you won't be impacted in the event that a single data center in a region goes down. For this demo, I want to demonstrate how availability zones work in the Azure portal. So let's go over here and create a resource group. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a resource group, and I'm going to call it AZG1, so availability zone group 1. And I'm going to stick it in a region that will support availability uh, zones as well. So not all zones support, not all regions support availability zones as of yet, but East US does. So I'm going to set this particular resource group in that region and I'm going to select this uh, subscription right here. So once I have that done, I'm going to click create. It'll create this really quick, quickly and I can go to this available, this resource group to create a virtual machine in an availability zone. So I'm going to select Ubuntu for this uh, demo. I'm not actually going to do anything really with the VM. I'm just going to create it. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to select the uh, subscription that I had before, and I'm going to select that resource group. And then I'm going to give it a name, VM1. Um, one. And um, let's put it in the same region as the resource group, ECUS. And on the availability options, notice I have availability sets, which I talked about last time. I'm going to select availability zones, and I'm going to choose one of the three availability zones in the East US region. So I'm going to select availability zone for VM1. And the rest of this stuff should be fine. I'm going to change the VM size so it doesn't you know, uh, bill me a lot of uh, Azure consumption while I'm doing this via, uh, demo here. Let me punch in some credentials. Now I got my credentials in. Let's go ahead and create some disks here. I'm just going to select some standard uh, disks and uh, I'm pretty much take all the defaults for uh, the rest of these tabs and review and create. And once th this is created, I can come back to it. I'm a, we can look at it in the Azure portal. Now that my deployment is completed now, I can go to the resource and I can look at here on the overview tab that I have this deployed into an availability zone one. And uh, if I look at my 
availability sets, I'm not going to be able to choose these because this is in a zonal resource. So I have the option of choosing either availability sets or availability zones. In this case, I chose zones and I deployed this into availability zone one for this particular instance. So let's go back and let's add another let's add another virtual machine to this and let's put it into another availability zone on Azure. So let's come back over here to resource group and then I'm going to select the one I just created and I'm going to click another virtual machine here. Ubuntu server will be fine. And let's create it this. And at this time, I'm going to select the same resource group and the VMs of VM2. I'm going to put this into the East US region. I'm going to select availability zone, but this time I'm going to put it in availability zone number two. And then I'm going to choose the same size that I chose last time and I'll punch in some credentials here for this virtual machine. Now that I have those in, I can pretty much take the defaults on the rest. I'm going to select standard HDD and then go through the, take the defaults on these tabs. I do want to look at something here though. Um, I have here in my networking tab, the virtual network. Now I do want to point out that although these virtual machines are in different availability zones in the same region, they have the same virtual network and that virtual network is actually spanning those data centers that these virtual machines are deployed into. So what you end up having with a virtual machine uh, in one uh, data center and another one and a second data center, so essentially two different zones, um, is you have the network traffic traversing between those availability zones. And so what that means is you'll end up being billed for traffic as it traverses those availability zones. So that's something to be aware Aware of whenever you create virtual machines that are in different availability zones that you do incur a uh, billing uh, for traffic that goes between those and I think it's at about one cent per gigabyte but other than that uh, I have now two virtual machines deployed across uh, my availability zone so let's go ahead and create this and come back to this whenever it's done deploying now my resource is deployed, I can go to my resource and I have my virtual machine here. Notice it's in availability zone two. So let's go back to the resource group that this is deployed in. And now I have uh, two virtual machines. Let's zoom out just a hair here so I can see what I'm doing. And I have two virtual machines that are all deployed in the same region uh, that I have a single network for these virtual machines. So I had, I don't have to create two different networks for this particular setup, but now I have a high availability option here for my virtual machine uh, one and virtual machine two. Now that they're spread across two different region, two different availability zones within the same region on Azure, and they're on the same virtual network. So this it gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of how I set up my availability ability on Azure to create highly availability applications. Um, and this will give me a very high SLA for a given application in a way that gives me something that I can go to sleep at night, not thinking that my application is going to go down in the event that an entire data center on Azure goes down. So it's one of the many options to consider whenever you go to deploy your applications on Azure for high availability setups. Well, today we looked at high availability on Azure by way of availability zones. And next time we're going to look at how you can bring your own operating system to Azure by way of importing a virtual hard disk or a VHD and how you can create a virtual machine using that in the event that you can't find something in the Azure portal that you can customize to run your applications. So thanks for watching this episode of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.